will no doubt recall that the magnetic force on a moving charge is given by the product of Q, V, and B, with the direction given by the right-hand rule. The same force will take effect on the free charges in a metal conductor when the conductor itself is in motion relative to a magnetic field. Setting aside for the moment our understanding that it is the negative electrons which move freely in the metal, we can imagine free positive charges being propelled in the direction of F toward the far end of the conducting wire. The force could be thought to arise from an electric field given by the force per unit charge. This field then has a magnitude of just V times B. Furthermore, the electric field acting over the length L of the conductor leads to a voltage drop between the two ends. This voltage is the induced EMF and is given by the product of B, L, and V. Another way to look at the same situation of a conductor moving in a magnetic field is to use Faraday's law of induction with the EMF given by the negative rate of change of magnetic flux. The minus sign is just Lenz's law and indicates the direction of induced currents. We ignore the minus sign in this lab. Magnetic flux phi is defined as the product of the B field times the area A of the surface through which the field passes times the cosine of the angle between the field and the normal to the surface. In this lab we will have the B field aligned with the normal. The angle theta will then be zero and the cosine will thus be simply one. Imagine a rectangular loop of wire with a short leading edge moving with speed V from a region of no magnetic field to a region with constant magnetic field B. In this bird's eye view we look down on the rectangular loop and the B field is oriented downward away from us. As the rectangular loop enters the field, the magnetic flux increases. That is, more magnetic field lines are piercing through the surface with sides formed by the rectangle. If the short side of the rectangle has length L and the loop has entered the field to a distance delta x, the area for flux calculations is the product of L times delta x. By Faraday's law, the induced voltage is the rate of change of flux, which is just the constant B times the rate of change of area, delta A over delta T. This becomes B times L times the rate of change of the distance x, which is just B times L times the velocity V. This is the same expression for induced voltage that we had previously by analyzing the force on free charges in the conductor. If we use a coil with n such rectangular loops, we can enhance the induced voltage by a factor of n. This is why any real electrical generator will have many, many loops or windings of wire moving in a magnetic field. We see that the induced voltage, capital V, is proportional to the velocity, small v, of the leading edge of the coil through the magnet. A plot of voltage versus velocity should yield a straight line with a slope of n b l. Measure b by inserting the gauss meter probe with the vertical b field perpendicular to the flat surface of the probe. Rock the probe slightly to find the maximum reading. Here you see the displayed reading change until we have the b field perpendicular to the probe. Measure the length of the short leading edge of the coil as best you can. Because of the thickness of the windings, some wires will be shorter than others along this edge. The error in the measurement of L will be significant and is approximately equal to the thickness of the windings. The motion sensor on the left will be used to measure the velocity of the cart and the voltage probes will feed the induced EMF data to Science Workshop and the computer. You may consider taping a reflecting piece of card stock to the back of the cart so the motion sensor has a clearer view of the receding cart. Give the cart a shove shortly after the start button in Data Studio has been clicked. 
The top plot is the induced voltage versus time. The induced voltage is zero before the leading edge of the coil enters the magnetic field. It reaches a large steady value as the leading edge passes through the magnetic field and becomes large and negative as the trailing edge of the coil passes through the magnetic field. Once the coil has completely cleared the magnetic field, the induced voltage is again zero. Highlight the flat region of maximum voltage and record the mean and standard deviation. The bottom plot is the velocity of the coil versus time. Find the flat, relatively constant velocity section, highlight this region, and record the mean velocity and its standard deviation as well. When we give the cart less of an initial shove, the velocity is slower and the induced voltage is also less. Collect the mean and standard deviation values for a variety of speeds and induced voltages. Here is a plot of induced voltage on the vertical axis versus velocity on the x-axis. Error bars are included to indicate the standard deviation of each measurement. Be sure to include the point zero, 00 in your data. Fit a straight line to the data and compare the slope with NBL. <laughs>